Good morning, Flagler County. I'm Rich Carroll. You're listening to Flagler's Morning News on Monday, March 6th. This is a very sensitive situation because it involves a minor, and uh, it, it, it's a horrible situation for all involved. Local leaders react to the recent attack on a school paraprofessional by a 17-year-old student. Flagler County School Board member Will Furry. First off, just my, my thoughts and prayers to all involved in that um, incident that happened on our campus. And uh, I just want the community to know that the, the board in our last meeting unanimously unanimously agreed to elevate this conversation and uh, start looking at the policy to make sure that this doesn't happen again. We are not law enforcement. We are policy makers. So when we respond to these type of situations, we have to do it from a policy perspective. Flagler County Commissioner Leanne Pennington says she was taken aback that this kind of incident could happen at a public school. You know, you're hoping the court system um, handles him fairly, everybody fairly for that matter. I don't know his mental capacity, uh, but he certainly seems to be a dangerous uh, human that should not have been in that system. As a county commissioner, and I don't speak for the rest of the board, although our our chair recently said it, um, we are there to support having the school resources officers Um, We fund that program, and we have no intention of of not doing that. Um, It's very vital that we have school resources officers in in the system there to help out in those situations. Bunnell Police Chief David Brannon says the department wholeheartedly supports the Flagler County Sheriff's Office and the school resource officers for their swift action. Every student and every person who works at the school has a right to be safe. And, uh, you know, I'm sure it's the best as the school system can do you know, we do ever they do everything they can to make that happen, and just events like this and other acts of violence can never be tolerated in the school system. I have kids that go to school, and um, it's uh, it's very disturbing as a parent to uh, see that that kind of violence is occurring in our school. The 17-year-old student is now being charged as an adult. This local news is a service of Flagler County's Toyota dealer, Fever Toyota US One St. Augustine. Here to wow you. The opening day of the Florida Legislature in Tallahassee will feature Flagler County Sheriff Rick Staley. Sheriff Staley and the Flagler County Sheriff's Office Honor Guard have been invited by the Speaker of the House, Paul Renner, to attend the opening day of the regular session of the Florida Legislature in Tallahassee. The Honor Guard is scheduled to present the colors before the joint session at 10 a.m. on Tuesday, March 7th. Flagler County Sheriff Rick Staley. This is a huge honor for our Honor Guard the sheriff's office, and our community. Renner Speaker has also indicated that he will be honoring me as the law enforcement officer of the day during the opening ceremony. The joint session will be attended by members of the House, Senate, as well as Governor Ron DeSantis. Sheriff Staley adds he looks forward to continuing to work with Speaker Renner to make Florida and Flagler County the safest place to work and raise a family. For Flagler's Morning News. I'm Karen Johnson. Work is progressing on Advent Health's new hospital in Palm Coast, despite several delays. That's according to Angel Cologne, operations manager for the Robinson and Morton construction firm. The biggest ones have been like after COVID, everything, so much demand on materials that everything's taken like uh, electrical gear. Uh, it's taking about 12 to 14 months to get it. From the time you release it for fabrication, Uh, but the whole process may take a year and a half. The construction team worked hard to absorb the impacts of those delays. We still, I mean, from, it it should have been up for about a four-month delay, but we made it about a two-month delay by picking up the pace. So, I mean, in the hospital, we've been coordinating every day with with them, and and, uh, we have a good plan to finish. What I hear based on us finishing construction in June, the plan is for them to open someone sometime in August. Advent Health says the $100 million project on Palm Coast Parkway near Bridgehaven Drive is their largest investment in the county. For Flagler's Morning News, I'm Rich Petschke. What is CORE? It stands for Coordinated Opioid Recovery Initiative and means that anyone, no matter whom they are or how much money they do or do not have or their insurance level, can get help confidentially with their opioid and other substance issues. 
Jeanette Simmons is the Chief Innovation Officer at Flagler Cares, and she said on a recent episode of Flagler Health Matters that CORE is in 12 Florida counties. Currently in Flagler County, we have the eighth highest overdose rate per capita. Mm -hmm. Last year, Florida experienced over 4,000 reported fatal overdoses. In Flagler County, emergency medical services reported that in 2021, teams responded to over 400 overdose calls. Simmons is quick to say that CORE does not handle just overdoses, but any substance use disorder. Flagler Health Matters is on WNZF on Saturday mornings at 11, and it's on the Flagler radio app. Tomorrow, one of the partners to the CORE program talks about their involvement. From the WNZF newsroom, I'm Deb Albertson. And now you're up to date on Flagler's Morning News. I'm Rich Carroll. And now, Mike Lee Show with your WNZF local sports update. History was made over the weekend at the FHSAA State Wrestling Championships. The Matanzas girls brought home the first team championship in school history, topping Freedom High, Michael Freeze on his battle-tested team. We've been winning all season. They're used to winning. Most teams couldn't handle the schedule we put together this year. We traveled to Missouri, wrestling in an 84 team tournament. Probably had the toughest schedule in the state of Florida and overcame everything. Mariah Mills, Tiana Freeze, Brooklyn Watt, and Annie Brown made the podium for the Pirates, joining two state runners-up in Christina Borgman and Brielle Bibla. Brielle defeated FPC's Ara Villar 8-7 in the semifinal. There was one individual champion, Pirates sophomore Kendall Bibla. It blows my mind to even consider myself a state champ. I would have never thought I would have ever made it to the state finals. All the girls in my weight class are very, very tough, and I thought I was going to either get third or fourth, but to the finals, I can't believe it. And then when I finally won, I was just like, this is crazy. I cannot believe this is happening. It was the best moment of my life. Two Pirate Boys placed, TJ McLean and Dylan Parkinson, joining FPC's Cole Hanant, Dalton Shell, and Anna Villar. Friday night scores, baseball, New Smyrna 8, FPC 0, Heinrich 9, Matanzas 2. Boys Lacrosse Friday, Cambridge 18, FPC 7. Saturday, Boys Lacrosse, Matanzas 8, Paxson 6, 4 goals for James Kelly. Track and field, FPC competed in the River City Relays in Jacksonville. Zachary Spooner won the 1600, Ashton Bracewell won the discus. Matanzas was at the Craig Speciale Invitational in Ponte Vedra. The boys team won the 4x400, Shamarian Gaines won the 100, Andrew Hatton the 3200, Luis Summer the 400. Games tonight, FPC plays Seabreeze in softball at home, baseball on the road, FPC boys lacrosse host Fletcher, Pirate Flag Football will host FPC Thursday at 7, interviews for the FPC head coaching position will begin this week. We have local sports updates Mondays and Fridays. From the WNZF Sports Desk, I'm Mike Licio.